I'm PGA Teaching Professional Todd Cope, Director of Instruction for US Golf TV and the Sanford Power Golf Academy. And today we're talking specifically about the shoulders. How much do they rotate and at what angle do they rotate? And I got some great drills for you to do to help you do just that. Now if you haven't already, hey, be sure to join our family here at US Golf TV. We love putting out content. It's helping golfers all over the globe. And you know what? I'm actually learning a lot of stuff from you because you're asking some great questions and you're leaving some great comments. So please keep doing that and do me a favor. Tell somebody else about us and also be sure to ring that bell so when you know when the next content comes out. So let's dive right into this. We're talking specifically today about the shoulders and how they move all right, in the golf swing. Now anytime I'm doing a demonstration and I'm doing some drills, I always like to use a six iron. So that's what I've got here today. Let's talk about the setup. So we're all on the same page. I've got my live view set up right down the line. I'm going to go ahead and get in my golf posture. And what you're going to notice here, and you're going to see on your screen, is I've got a red line. Now, there's no exact particular angle for this red line that we want to use for a reference, but it basically we're going to position it in such a way that it kind of goes through like, notice how it goes through kind of like my shirt collar here, kind of through the base of my neck. And it's at a, I'd say roughly around a 45 degree angle, all right, to the ground. And so that's where I'm going to start from. Now, the first thing I want to talk about is the angle in which the shoulders rotate in the backswing. So when I'm set in there, I'm just going to go ahead and make a couple practice swings. Got my six iron. I've already talked about that line there. When I rotate back, I want to feel like my lead shoulder, which is my left shoulder, you can see it right here from face on, my lead shoulder works right along that red line. You can see that right there, right? Now that is a perfect position in my opinion when we swing that club back. That helps me get my shoulders, specifically my lead shoulder, started in a good spot initially on the takeaway. Now, I do have other students who might focus more on their trail shoulder, right? So we're talking about the backswing, we're talking about the angle. So if you wanna work your trail shoulder, maybe you feel that better, okay? My trail shoulder is gonna work, okay? I'm working on my right shoulder here. You can see it from the camera. See how when that's rotating, that's also staying on that same angle. You see that? Okay, now that's a great reference point to help me get my shoulders turning at the correct angle. Now a lot of golfers, if you slice the golf ball, or maybe your friends or somebody said, hey, you come up and out of your posture, this is what it would look like. You're set in here, we got that red line again. Okay, I got my live view right down the line here. When they swing that back, okay, and my shoulders come up and out, Notice how my shoulders are at a different angle here, right? So that would be what we would call swinging the shoulders to flat. This would be flat, okay? You can see the difference between my club that's along my shoulders and the red line, or you see this sometimes, not as often, but they could be too steep, okay? See, sometimes I see some female golfers get going in this position. You can see the difference between the club, all right, and that red line. So when we're talking about the back swing, I believe that your shoulder should rotate right along that line there. Like I said, that line's going through my shirt collar, right at the base of my neck, and it's about a 45 degree angle there. So that's a little bit on the back side. I want to talk now about the angle on the downswing, and then we're going to talk about how much they should rotate. All right, because there's a couple things that are in play here. Now, this is where the rubber hits the road. All right, when you're set in there and you take this up, now when you start coming down, okay, what you're gonna feel is your shoulders work along that same angle. See that? As I'm working through the strike, notice from down the line there, my shoulders are still on that red line. So I'm back up, my shoulders rotate on that line. I come back down, boom. Now if you slice the golf ball, if you slice the golf ball, you might have that good backswing. Okay, see my shoulders along that line, but your first move is this way. Now notice how my right shoulder went above that red line, so I'm here and I work that way, okay? This would be the slice move. Now, what you're probably gonna guess here is if you tend to hit behind it a little bit or maybe hit some big high hooks, you could be the opposite. So you're back there, and then you work this way. Now my left shoulder worked above that red line, and my right shoulder worked below it. That kicks me two in to out. I'll hit behind it, typically up and to the right, and I'll hit a lot of big hooks or even blocks at certain times. I see that with a lot of really good players. So what I like to do is what I call kind of this mirroring, okay? I do this a lot with my students. So I get set up, I'm gonna put that line right there, and I'm just gonna mirror that motion. I'm gonna take it up and right back down, see? 
I'm just focusing on my shoulders. I can see my shoulders working. And I'm just going to mirror that, mimic that motion back and through. This is just a great drill to get that feel. And then I'm going to go ahead and just grab a golf ball. I'll get set up and just hit it. And just try to replicate that particular feel. So hopefully that makes sense. Now, if you got some questions or some things you want to you want me to answer, be sure to throw those in there. I'll be happy to answer those. Or maybe you got a different idea or a different feel that you might do for that. So let me give you a drill to work on that. And then we're going to talk about the amount of rotation too, because we haven't discussed that. So that's a little bit on the on the angle. But how can you practice that at home? Well, I'll just take a golf club, put it along your shoulders. Now notice that. See when I sit in there? You can see from down the line there, with the live view, notice how the club is right on that red line. And I'm just going to turn. Boom. And I'm going to try to get those two lines. See how they're matching? And they're mirroring the club and the red line. I'm trying to mirror those two back and through. My shoulders are rotating on the same angle back and the same angle back through. Now, as we already told you, if you slice, you're probably here and then you're that way. Right shoulder high, lead shoulder, left shoulder low. Or if you're hitting that big block, you could be just the opposite. So this is how it practices right here at the Academy by students in addition to that mirroring. So that's a little bit about the angle. Now, how about the amount of rotation? How much should they be rotating for that? So this is a little bit more of a face-on view here. So I think the key is you got to let your hips turn a little bit. And we've done a ton of videos on hip turn. All right, if you've watched any of my stuff, you know already that I think the hips should turn. Let's say, how much should they turn? I don't know, gosh. Let's say maybe 45 degrees. I mean, I think they should turn quite a bit. And when you do that, that allows your shoulders to turn also. Okay, so see how my left shoulder is not only turning at an angle, okay, it's equal to that red line, but it's also turning back and behind that golf ball. Okay, so that's the other thing. I'll take a club and I'll put it across here, but this time, Instead of focusing on the angle that I'm turning on, I'm going to focus on the amount of turn. See where that club is pointed? Well behind the golf ball. Now what I have found, and if you're slicing the golf ball, this is, you want to listen to this right now. What I have found for golfers who slice it, typically what they do lots of times is they limit their hip turn, which means they can't move their shoulders the way that they need to at that angle that we just talked about. So what they do is, is they get extra range of motion by standing up. Okay, so they limit their hip turn. All right, and they're like, uh-oh, I don't have the flexibility to keep going at this angle. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stand up, okay, and then I can turn more. And when they do that, then the club gets all out of whack. So what you want to do when you're set in there is you want to turn your shoulders as much as you can, but you want to let that hip turn a little bit. All right, and when you do that, you're going to definitely increase your range of motion, but more importantly, be able to keep it at that particular angle. So next time you head to the golf course, here's what you're going to be thinking about. If you're curving the golf ball, could be a hook, could be a slice, it very well could be because your shoulders are not moving in the right angle. Get set in there, get that line going through the base of your neck, kind of the collar of your shirt. Okay, do some mirroring right there. Love this drill right there, back. You can see my shoulders working right at an angle. I'm going to do two or three of those. All right, then I'm just going to set up. Go ahead and swing and hit it. I'm not going to lie, that actually felt pretty good and was pretty solid. So that's how you move the shoulders. That's the angle. That's the amount of rotation. If you do those couple things, you're going to see your contact improve, and therefore, your scores go down.